Hi, Homeworthy, I'm Nicola. Welcome to my home in Texas. Come on in, it's hot outside. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, I'm Nicola McLaughlin, and we are in my home in San Antonio, Texas. I am a interior designer and a jewelry designer, primarily jewelry design. I graduated from TCU with an interior design degree, and when I had babies and life took over, I just focus on jewelry design. So that's where we are today. I'm working on a new house that we are gonna live in and doing interior design there, but no clients for the time being. I was born in South Africa. My parents are from England and went to university in South Africa and met there. And so that's how that took place and my English background. And so we still have some family in England and I, love being there i love english style the hodgepodge of it and just how refined it is and curated and so that has a big 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 impact on my interior design and the way i like my home and it feels nostalgic to my grandparents home and so i have been heavily influenced by english interiors the house we live in right now is a traditional split level home. Um, it feels like a tree house. There's trees surrounding it. It's so, so cozy and we love it. I was um, living in Dallas when I first saw it. I saw it on the internet. I had the flu and I was quarantining in a hotel room. Um, and I sent my mom and my fiance, husband to be, it was about 10 years ago to come and look at it and they sent videos and I just I, I loved it it had great bones it was old um, and it just felt right and so we got it before we got married and then I redid a little bit of it and we moved in after we were married and so the timing was perfect but it was not the first home we looked at. We did see a couple more, but it was just the only one I looked at from afar. So this house has that British interior influence in it. Um, it's a little hodgepodge, which helps hide a lot of the children's stuff. We have baskets throughout the house um, that we keep their toys in. There's a playroom downstairs that all of like their big toys are in, but um, it's really making the room a little bit unattractive for children. So this isn't a huge a room they wanna play in. Um, and I think that is the secret to keeping a house looking clean-ish um, with children. We also have a no markers rule that the markers have to stay in the kitchen. There's no markers allowed throughout the rest of the house um, and everything's washable. You know so but it is just all stuff at the end of the day so i'm not super crazy about it but we've been pretty lucky with the two girls we have a little boy who's our youngest and he is into everything wants to open every coffee table book pull it off throw it off the table um the girls never touched anything so we'll see how that goes he's about to start walking if we keep everything clean <laughs> Welcome to our foyer, it's the entryway of our house. It's a small space, but we made the most out of it. Um, I have some special pieces that you see right when you walk in the front door. This was one of the first um, pieces I bought when I lived in Dallas. Um, it's a jade lamp and I just, I love how it, it's so interesting and I love the colors in it and I love that it's jade, which we use a lot of jade in jewelry design. Um, this is my first Louis Philippe mirror I purchased and it fit perfectly here. It's beautiful, warm color Biedemeyer chest. Um, and then pictures of two of our three children. I need to add one of the baby. And to our left is a butterfly installation by Claire Crow. Um, I just loved the way this wrapped around the wall. She did it remotely before being remote was 
an option. She did it, I wanna say in 2018, and she put a big piece of vellum um, that came in the shipment and it had the marks where all of the butterflies were installed. So I loved that about it. It was, it was a remote job, but it's a beautiful piece and it's just a happy welcome of butterflies. When we bought this home, there was a little bit of remodeling to do. We didn't move any walls, but we did repaint and redo all the bathrooms. We um, tiled the kitchen from floor to ceiling and it didn't all happen right at once. We have slowly but surely added on along the way. Um, we added the room we're sitting in now um, when I had my second daughter. So it was a couple years ago and this was always the plan to push the house out and add a room so we could have a little bit of extra bedroom space for the growing family. Um, there were some details added like the archways, we added all the cutouts in them. We made some archways round um and that is about it but we did definitely change all light fixtures all um we wallpapered some rooms so um it was it was a journey it, it we did it over time but it was it was good okay now i'm going to take you into our formal living room which is another area the kids don't really love to be in. There's not a lot for them in here. But um, this whole room was designed around the Degorne panels. Um, I, I always wanted two big panels on either side of the mantel. And um, we have more contemporary piece of art in between them, which I think is a fun juxtaposition between the two. It's a nice balance. Um, this coffee table is um, a collaboration with Oyster Street Studios. It's actually the Nicola coffee table. And so the little scallops on there match the archways in this room, which is a fun little interesting piece. My office did these flowers, which is incredible. I wish I could do anything like this. They um, just do an exceptional job. I also have a porcelain flower piece. It's an Aaron Lauder piece and just all my favorite coffee table books. So this beautiful one is called Art Life. And you know, there's just, there's, they're all my favorites, all of my inspiration pieces, and they're stacked in a certain way and I want it to look a certain way. So I'm gonna show you one of my first big buys, pieces of furniture. This is um, a Biedemeyer chest from the 1800s. It has traveled with me from Dallas and um, it is one of my most prized possessions. It's beautiful. And I feel like it was one of these pieces that I bought well before I knew what my style was. I just loved it. I love the, I love the legs. I love the black on it. Um, and so it's a really pretty piece in our house and it's special because I bought it for myself before I was married and um, it was like my first big buy. This is a beautiful vase that I actually won in an auction. And um, I, I just, it's gonna be the centerpiece of our entryway when we, in our new house when we move. And it just has a mommy with a little baby. And I just thought that was so pretty with the flowers on it, it has a trellis. This is a really pretty piece by Alexis Walter, and she's out of New Orleans. I think it's just very calm, and it's just something very interesting to look at. And I love the way it all ties together. But that is just, it was, it was in auction, and it, I guess no one else wanted it, and so I got it for a deal. This is my ultimate favorite scent. Ever. And it is so funny. It's Joe Malone. It's the lime basil and mandarin. Um, we first rented a house in London when I first smelt it. And I love it. It reminds me of that. And then a few years later, we rented another house in London. They also had this candle, same scent. Then we rented a house in France, same candle, same scent. And so I am literally like this, cam this, this candle is our way it's always a little wink and so we have it all over our house and it I can't I now I cannot change my favorite scent we have two antique sheep over here and I love them and 
I won one of them in auction and I bought another one. But um, the older the better. And so this was our first one. And um, my office had named it Winston and now we can't let it go. And then we have a baby one, which you can maybe see it's a little bit smaller, but I got it for my husband for his birthday <laughs> and he opened it and I've never laughed so hard in my life. He was like, what? is this i don't understand this gift and my kids thought it was hilarious and we took all these funny pictures but that's churchill the baby um and i love them and they're going to be in our study in our new house and i love sheep so that's our little fun quirk in here so the plates in this room is an interesting approach it was more lack of storage for all of these tablescape pieces that i was collecting and i was like, should I put them on the wall? It was COVID and so I started hanging them up and I really like them on the wall and instead of just being in storage. And so we have throughout the rooms in these few um, public areas, we have a lot of plates on the wall and really it's just lack of storage. <laughs> so this rug I had gotten this was always here. And so I've had it for about 10 years and it's really held up well, but it is more contemporary. And so it really worked with the house when my style was a little bit more transitional. It was a nice blend, but I think it has blended so beautifully and it has really become this pattern on pattern with the pillows and all of the fabrics in here. And so I've loved how it, how it turned out and I, I didn't want to change it. And it just, it's been through a lot, but it, it, it's held up super well. So I love this rug. So this house started as a transitional house. We had a lot of modern furniture I brought from Dallas um, before I, that I had before we were married and just had collected through, you know, college and after college. And um, so it started more transitional. It was traditional pieces with a few modern pieces, more cleaner colors. And um, over time we've introduced, or I've introduced some more saturated colors and we've gotten more traditional pieces and kind of taken out the transitional element of it. So I would say the overall style of the house now is more traditional. So I am a girly girl, so I do tend to lead a little girly in my interiors. Luckily, my husband is has two daughters and me, so he is game for any design decisions I make. Um, everything I do put in, though, is pretty much sentimental. It always has um, a meaning behind it. It's something that I love, and, and it just either touched me in some way, reminds me of something, or um, has some sentimental value that's been passed down from my grandparents or my parents, so. Okay, welcome to the dining room. So this is a little in-between summer, fall tablescape. We're not totally fall yet, but uh, I have my grandparents in town, so it worked out perfectly for setup for the tour. Um, this room has changed a little bit since we moved in, but the chairs and the rug have always stayed the same. Um, we have two big storage units in here, if you will, um, that sideboard and a chest over here that I keep all of my plates and tableware inside of. So it is hidden, but as you see, it's not a ton of space. So that is why you see a lot of plates on the wall. These plates are by Royal Copenhagen, and I loved the way they worked with the brackets that I have these porcelain flowers on by Vladimir Collection. These are all my favorite flowers, garden roses, roses, lily of the valley, and anemones. Um, I have some pieces that were wedding gifts that are on display and um, I love how it creates a very me environment in this space. I have a little bit more of my fancier pieces in here that I don't use as often. Um, so I have my wedding china, teacups that match my wedding china. 
um, and some pieces of silver. And then over here is the rest of my wedding china, which is Queen Victoria heron pieces. So this is what is inside the sideboard. So as you see, it's not super organized, but I do my best. Um, we have taken the keys out because the kids take the keys and lose them. So a fun piece that has a little story behind it. I have this chinoiserie plates by Miss Alice. I got a whole collection of them for, these are just the, the salad plates, but I got this whole collection for my 30th birthday. I asked my husband to do a tablescape for me and he said, you have to give me some direction. And so I said, you can go off that. Um, he had a lot of help, but I did get this for my 30th birthday. So that was a really pretty table and something I could take home. So I used to collect teapots and then that turned into teacups. I love tea. Um, my parents, love to have their afternoon tea and so I do too. Um, I don't always get it and have time to sit anymore these days, but I did um, collect a lot of teapots and teacups throughout the years and I have some of my favorite ones on display on the other side of the room. But my girls now like to have tea parties and they are very careful, but they do grab what they can take. So I keep most of them behind closed doors now. I love to set a table and I love having people over. Um, it is something that we don't do all the time, but uh, my family does do it a lot. My mom is wonderful at helping me hand wash all the dishes and so she's always welcome to come. But um, when I'm setting a table, I like to keep the florals as low as possible, unless it's truly for some sort of tablescape shoot where it's drama and then, you know, we make it high. But, um, and then just kind of having a theme. And so these plates just had all the pretty colors in them for this time of the year. You know, it's still 90 in Texas, sometimes 100. So it doesn't feel quite fall yet. And like our florist doesn't have a ton of fall colors. And so it's just a happy and cheery color combination. Our table really only fits six. We can squeeze eight, but it just, it's, that's perfect for us. New house will have a bigger table. So I don't know what I'll do with all my six and eight piece sets that I have. So this chandelier is by Visual Comfort. It is so much fun. I bought another one for our next house. That's how much I love it. And um, during Christmas, I wrap, it with Fraser fur and garland and I put ribbon on it, velvet ribbon, and it just, it's so fun to decorate. And it looks good undecorated, obviously, but um, I also decorate it for my kid's party. I'll put pink bows on it for the girls. We normally do birthday cake in here and candles. And I, I decorate this room too with like balloons and presents. So when they come out in the morning, they see it. So it's always, it's fun. It can be serious and it can be, can be fun. So my professional journey started when I was in college. Um, I was studying interior design and I was making jewelry on the side. It just kind of came about. Um, I had a lot of studio classes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 8 a.m., which none of my friends had that and I couldn't go out the night before and then go to class. So I was like, I need something to do to fill my time. And so I was making necklaces and they were very simplistic, but um, you know, just here and there. And then people would come by my dorm room or when I lived in the sorority house, they would come by and they'd be like, can I have a necklace to go out tonight? And I'd make it really fast and give it to them. They'd go out and then word traveled. And, um, and so I just, I kept doing it. It was easy to do when I was in school. Um, and then every summer I would get an internship with a designer throughout college and high school. And, um, and so I just, I was really always doing both interior and jewelry design. When I graduated from college, I moved to Dallas from Fort Worth and worked for um, an interior designer there. And also did jewelry before 
9 a.m. when I would go to work and then I would do it in the evenings after five. Um, I had a long distance relationship with my now husband who lived in San Antonio. And so it was, it was the same thing, you know, I was just filling a void of time. And um, then when I moved to San Antonio, I opened a design firm, still doing jewelry, and worked for a couple years when I had my babies. After the first was born, I realized that like something had to give, there just wasn't enough time in the day. And so I stopped doing interior design and just kept on with the jewelry design, which allows for more flexible hours. And then the whole influencer, kind of developed by itself. My my social media platforms were just growing um, from pretty unprofessional photos that just, you know, were snaps. Um, and so that's kind of led us where we are today. I'm one day I'll do interior design again when my kids are a bit older and don't need me as much present as at home. But for now, that's kind of how I'm balancing everything. So this is more of our informal living room. Um, this is where football games are watched, TV series are watched, um, where my husband and I kind of decompress at night. Um, this is a room we added on. There used to be double doors in this transition way, and this was a patio. And so we just built on top of the patio, but it was it's the perfect amount of space, it's just, a nice getaway for after dinner drinks. And I, I love how cozy it is. I love the library feel of the study. It's formal enough to be off of the dining room, but it's not a super formal room. Um, this is a room that our kids do watch a lot of TV in. They love to lay on the couch and watch TV. <laughs> so one of my favorite pieces in this room is this super old vanity. Um, we use it as a jewelry display, but it has beautiful silk inside. It opens up and the jewelry just looks so beautiful in there. It's such a pretty piece. I couldn't leave it in storage. So I brought it here. It's a safe place. It's wiggly, wobbly table, but not a high traffic area. So I love this piece here and I love the way it plays well with the more modern art and flowers on top of it. Um, our bookshelves are busy, but they're fun and every piece is special. Um, my parents collect these clocks and I found some along the way in auctions or in antique stores and Cartier makes them and Tiffany's and so they're fun little momentums to pick up. They're really old. Um, I'll get them working when we move to the next house. Um, this is one of my grandfather's sewing boxes. It's an antique box and it's just so, so pretty. Um, so I like to have my really special pieces on top under the light. The room, I when I was designing it, I had drawn the room and what I wanted it to look like. And so um, the lights were always a part of the plan. They were from the very beginning. So I wanted to feel this beautiful sense of a library, not a super formal library, but I love rooms that are lit by lighting that isn't recessed or bright. And so it's more, feels a little bit more intimate and just creates such a mood and a good environment in the room. So love sconce lighting, love library lights, art lights, I love that feel. This is a really, really pretty piece of art that's so interesting. It's it's mixed media in the sense it's pressed flowers, there's cut velvet, there are sequins, it's water colored, but it's it, it's it's a really pretty piece. These lampshades are Sister Parish and they I custom made them for the room out of their fabric and it just adds a little special extra touch. Um, again, these antique boxes I love. I pick them up on trips. They always have them anywhere in England. They're English boxes. This box is a old writing box. And so when you open it, it creates a table and it has just a leather writing pad. This is a place where they used to have the ink. And so it's a really pretty box. And all these boxes are a nice place to put remotes or things that you want hidden that aren't as pretty. Um, 
sometimes they're tea caddies and different special things. Um, and then I'm going to show you one piece of art that's special. Again, a high placed under the light piece. Um, this piece of art is something I, one of the first pieces I gave my husband. We like to give art as gifts. And when he opened it, he knew exactly what it was. It's called Fields Over England. And it truly is, it, it's what it looks like when you're flying into England. And so it gives me that special feeling of like, we're here, you know, when you're about to land somewhere, especially over an overseas trip. So I, I really love this piece and um, I love that my husband knew what it was before he knew the title of it. I'm very inspired by florals and I'm, in every room there's some sort of floral theme and just fabric that I love that I take, you know, bits and pieces from and continue the rest of the room out to have that theme. Um, so I would definitely say florals. Like I'm, I'm a flower girl and you'll see when we do the tour, they're all through the house. My favorite thing about this home is probably that I brought all my children home here from the hospital, all three of them. So it's just a very special place. Um, but my favorite room in the house is probably the one we're sitting in. It's kind of contrary to what I just said, it's kind of our child free area. So it's a great place for my husband and I to watch TV at night, to hang out. Like I'll take a lot of calls from here. It's a little bit more separated from all the noise of the house. Um, and I love the light in here. It's just a bright room, happy room. We have lots of yellows and greens. So love this room. So I will show you my daughter's room because it is one of my favorite rooms I've ever, ever done. It is just such a sense of peace in here and calmness. And I, I love when I have to sleep with them in the middle of the night because I love being in here. But um, this was actually my oldest daughter's room. And when we had our third child, we luckily had twin beds in here. So it worked out. And so now both girls share the room, a lot of chit chatting, a lot of giggling at night that goes on in here but they love sharing a room and I loved the way the whole room turned out. Um, the embroidery on the linens is just so pretty. It's scalloped bows. Um, and I love the pattern on pattern. So we have the wallpaper on the pillow fabric as well. And then I thought the gingham was just a nice mix to that. This piece over here used to be in our entryway, which I loved for entryway, but it just works so well in here and it's sophisticated. So it, it balances out the sweetness of the room a little bit. Um, and I, I, I just love the way it all played together. So I love that it found a new home and I will be sad to leave this sweet room when we leave this house. But so my daughter's love sharing a room in the new house. They cannot believe that I would have ever put them in separate rooms. I thought we wanted separate rooms because sometimes the second child who is more of our wild child, it's like, where is my room? Where our oldest child is a little bit of a scaredy cat and loves her sister being with her at all times. So I thought we wanted separate rooms, but it turns out they love sharing rooms with each other probably because it's one big party every night, but um, makes for really sweet childhood memories. Um, my brothers shared a room, so and they loved it. So I, I, I'm happy. Whatever they want to do, we can have a guest bedroom if they want to they share next house. So when I was designing this room, I loved the wallpaper and it, it was, it is a repeat pattern if you look at it, but I loved dividing it up with these canopies over the bed. And I also think it just makes you feel very enclosed and gives you a sense of space. So I loved that for them and I love the way they turned out and they're just, they're the, the fabric's linen, so it, it's not super structured and I love the way it just hangs, it's a drapey look, but I, um, I, I love how it really creates just a, a space for each of them. So one of my favorite things about 
designing for my kids is they add their own little touches to everything. And this little bird cage is something they hung in here. And I, I mean, there couldn't be something that's more perfect. It's just, it's quirky and it's weird, but it's perfect here. Um, and so I love how they've added things. And on the back of their bedroom door, there's all these pictures they draw and then they stick them to the back of the door. And it just, it, it makes a house a home. So I love that. So the next room is our master. And a lot of florals are in here as well. As I mentioned before, my husband is happy with whatever design I want to do, which is really sweet um, because a lot of the times it is a lot of florals. Um, again, you'll see another canopy. I did them for my girls and then I was like, I have to have that too for myself. So um, it's a little bit more formal. The inside is pleated, which is one of my favorite things on the top of the canopy. When you're looking up, you see all these pleats, which I didn't do for the girls. So you do learn as you go on things that you could improve on. Um, I added these silk tassels. And again, I just, I love the, the floral, the striped floral print of the fabric. And then there's this beautiful silk on the headboard that also has a floral. Um, another one of my favorite parts of this room is these bedside table lamps. Um, my husband and I went to Paris when my daughter was 18 months old, my second daughter was 18 months old, and it was my first time to ever leave the kids. And it probably wasn't the best idea to go to Paris for the first time of leaving them. But um, when we were there, we stayed at the Ritz and I was like, I have to have these. I have to take them home with me. And they're in every room. So it's like, they've got to sell them anyway. They had them in the gift store. So we bought them and here they are. I'm not waiting for the next house for these. So it's like, these are perfect here. And um, a fun fact, I never had wallpaper in here. Wanted it, my kids both have, my, all my kids have wallpaper in their room. But um, because we're about to move, I never did anything to it. But this is actually peel and stick wallpaper that I did myself. And so I'm very, I was very impressed. It was very therapeutic. It's a really great way to slow down. And it's like painting, it's just very relaxing. Um, and so I'm really impressed with the way I did it and how it turned out, but it looks really pretty. And so it's just another layer, another texture in here, which, which always makes things very cozy. Um, the rug in this room and the light fixture were always here. I put them in when we moved into this house. And so those are kind of the grounding points of the room. And we've worked around them on all the designs that this room has had. So we've always had a variation of seats in this bay window and they are used if we need a quiet place to do a zoom or um, just to sit. But a lot of the times they are used for bags, shoes, putting on shoes. Um, <laughs> there, it's, it, it is a nice place to sit, especially when it's raining outside. I love sitting here and um, kind of decompressing. But it's a nice place when you shut your bedroom door to sit and relax. It's really, really nice at night when you have these, these floor lamps on. So I mentioned my husband is fine with florals and all of that. So I, 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 I love pink pieces and um, this room did turn pretty pink pretty quickly as we were going along. But um, I am a pink girl at the end of the day. And so it is very fitting and it's it's a very charming and relaxing room. I love the combination of just in general, tone on tone, creams, whites together. And I feel like this dusty pink has really joined into that. And so it, it has, although it is pink, it is a neutral. So because I design jewelry, I have a lot of jewelry options. And so what I like to do is get pieces that I really want to wear. I haven't worn in a while because, you know, a mom of three, it's like you grab what you're used to. So I'll wear a lot of the same earrings, but I do love wearing all of my pieces. And so what I try to do is put the pieces I really want to wear that I wouldn't normally grab for out. So they're easy to grab when I um, am getting ready. And so um, 
These are one of our new pieces and they're just super fun hearts. And um, this is actually a piece that hasn't come out yet, but it's a reminder to think about what, how we want to shoot it and all of that. And so that's kind of how I organize my jewelry and what I need to wear, what I want to wear. And, um, and it's always pretty, like I love to see it. This is something that we just launched. We made tiaras in some of the same styles as we have earrings. So um, it's always fun to have a mannequin head in your bedroom, but I love the way the linen head <laughs> looked with the earrings. And um, yeah, I have my necklaces and bracelets and jewelry boxes out. So everything's in a place where I can grab it and see it. And I always feel like if you can see things, you will wear them. And so, it's a two for one because they do look pretty out and it is my jewelry station. I don't normally show people inside of my closet. It's a three by five space that is very full and it only allows for one season of clothes at a time. But I have it organized as best I can possible. Um, I can't really totally invite you in because there's not room for the both of us, but um, I do use a little bit of my husband's closet, most of his closet actually. And um, I will also be doing that in the new house. We will, he's gonna have a very limited area. It is bigger, a lot bigger than this, but um, it works and it goes, it, it helps me be so minimal. Like this doesn't look minimal, but I do have a rule one in one out. So anytime I get something new, something goes out and um, if I haven't worn it in a while, it also goes out. Um, I found out how to get a ton of shoes in one area. There's ways to do it, but this is this is a, a crowded, but very happy and beautiful space with a lot of pretty pieces. <laughs> These were the shoes I had bought to wear with my wedding dress. And when I put them on, right before I was about to walk down the aisle, um, these flowers kept, grabbing on the bottom of my lace, so I couldn't wear them. And luckily I had some other shoes for other wedding events. So it was, it was pretty funny. They like photographed them with the rings and they did all these pictures and I never wore them. But I can't get rid of them because they are kind of my wedding shoes. Um, I tried to organize everything by color to help me be able to see things. But um, yeah, doesn't always, doesn't always have to be beautifully displayed as you can see, but it is, it's, it, it does its job. When I'm in client meetings for interior design back in the day, or even now you can see it, it's it really the way people dress indicate pretty well what their interior style is going to be, what they lean towards. Sometimes, you know, the husband has more say and is more design driven than the wife. And so it's not always telltale, but um, definitely with women more, than likely what they are wearing and what they, how they dress themselves is what they like their interiors to be. And I feel like you can probably see that in my closet, that it's, it's a bunch of florals, it's a bunch of prints. Um, one of my favorite pieces that I cannot wait to wear is this jacket, which does look like my bedroom, <laughs> but it is so fun and I, I just cannot wait for Texas to maybe even be 80 degrees and I'll start wearing it. I, I love this jacket and I cannot wait to wear it. And then um, a fun dress I can show you is this one, which even though there's purples in here, I feel like um, it probably feels a lot like my home. And if I wore this, you might be able to envision what my home looks like. Okay, so this is the kids' bathroom at the end of the day. And when we had Oliver, our youngest, um, he needed a changing table. So we redid this layout. There used to just be a nice stool in here, a vanity stool. And we put this bar cart with a little cushion on it, some baskets underneath called it a day. And so we have a changing station and we can still get in the bathtub and 
it, you know, it is, it is what it is, but, um, I think it's actually really cute for, for having a changing station in here and it worked well, but, um, this is a waterworks vanity and this is a Pella light fixture, which was one of the original kind of more funky pieces I put in the house. Um, needs a little bit of dusting, but, um, it's a fun, it's called the bubble chandelier and it really is bubbly. Um, the mirror is from restoration hardware and, um, this faucet is a wall faucet and it is from Newport brass. So I've always loved this bathroom. It has a lot of great light in it. It's small, but it, it works perfectly. And, um, the wallpaper is just really fun and adds just a fun twist to the rest of the house. It's, it's still hot, but this is our little outdoor space, which is great when it's a little bit cooler outside. We had a rough, hot summer here in Texas, so it's a little bit dead outside, a little brown, but um, it's nice to have a green wall and be under the trees and have a place to sit off the kitchen when the kids are playing outside. And so it's a really charming little area. So this deck was original and it was double the size because to, to our to my left is where the study is um, where we added on to the study so this was an original deck and we just felt like there was no need to change it there was nothing wrong with it and so we kept it it's 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 worn over the ages but it works for us and um it just it disappears into the trees and the the greenery so it's it's stayed so we don't spend a ton of time out here in the summer, but you know, our, our winters aren't as cold as other areas of the world. And fall is a great time to be outside when we used to have an outdoor TV out here, but I put a green wall up instead. Um, and it was, we, we watched football out here when it was football season. I say we, I never watched football. My husband watched football um, out here and um, so we can use it, just not, you know, it's not really a great place in the summer <laughs> to sit outside, but in the shadier areas, it's doable. Home to me means just a safe place, a place that you want to be, a place that you long to be when you've been away, even when you're somewhere amazing, a place you can't wait to get back to, place you want to invite your loved ones to and have memories made there, have special occasions. And um, I'm a homebody, so I love <laughs> being at home. I hate leaving. So I really love having a very special, special place. And it's rubbed up on my children. They're, they, they don't want to move. <laughs> they don't want to go to our new house. They, they're like, they didn't. They were like, no, we love everything. We love our toys here. We love the trees. We love everything. And I was like, we can't take the trees with us, but we will take everything else. And so I think that's special. They feel very safe and cozy here too. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.